Hello and welcome to the video. My name is Keith Barker and in this video I'd like to chat with you about a really important tool that you and I should use right now before we take an online exam from Cisco that could mean the difference between passing and failing. So as we consider what are some of the things we should be doing right now in preparation for a certification exam from Cisco, one of the tools that I've talked about over and over is super important is Packet Tracer. So instead of buying a physical rack of gear, which costs quite a bit of money, takes a lot of electricity, it's loud and so forth, we could emulate all that in a free application called Packet Tracer that we can get from Cisco. So check out my other videos on Packet Tracer for how to use it. It's fantastic. But the tool I want to chat with you about right now that's really important is the view whiteboard. You might say, well, Keith, how's a whiteboard going to help me? Well, in the old days, what we do is when we had an exam, and I've taken over 100 Cisco exams over the past 20 years, and we'd schedule the exam, go to a physical location and check in, and they would give us a piece of paper that's laminated and then like a dry erase marker. So you could, during the exam, if you need to write down a few thoughts or a diagram or something, you could do it. But if you take an online exam, you can't use a pen or pencil. But what they do give you is the view whiteboard. This tool is part of the online delivery of the exam. And I, here's what I wish I had done. I wish before I took that first online exam, I wish that I had had some time in practicing with it. And that way I could use it as a tool as opposed to, oh, what's this thing and how do I use it? So in this video, I'd like to talk with you and then demonstrate and show you how you can practice with the view whiteboard so that when it comes time for your exam, you'll know exactly how it works, how you can leverage it and use it for your success. So this is a link currently as of this recording for the whiteboard. And the reason they provide it is they want us to be aware of it and what it'll look like in the exam environment. So it explains it, what the tools do. If we scroll down, check this out. It actually gives you a chance to use the whiteboard, the practice whiteboard. And that way, when it comes time for the exam, the actual whiteboard, the tool itself won't be a problem. Now, a question may come up. Okay, when exactly would I use like a whiteboard or in the old days, you know, that laminated sheet of paper to draw diagrams or make notes? When would it be really helpful? One of those would be if we're working with IP subnetting questions. Check this out. One of the techniques I talk about in my Subnet Saturday series, which is here on YouTube, it's in a playlist all by itself, taking you from zero to hero with IP and subnetting, is to go ahead and write out the values of each bit in an octet of data. So with the digital whiteboard, like what we'll have in the exam, we can just go ahead and click on the alpha character here, a text character, and then create a space, and then put in those values. So I'll do it right here, 128, and then 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and one. And then if we have a mask of like 240 and dotted decimal, and if you haven't yet learned or studied about IP subnetting, don't worry. Check out that series called Subnet Saturdays. But you'd want to write out these values. And if the mask was 240, that means the dividing line would be right here. And what that also means is that our block size is 16. So besides using the text tool and the drawing tool, we also have an eraser and an undo button and zoom in and zoom out options as well. So if we were solving a problem regarding subnetting and I knew the block size was 16, again, come to subnet Saturdays and check out those to understand all those details. I could then say, okay, great. My subnets are going to be zero and then add the block size. So I could just get my text tool out again right here. And I could say the first subnet is going to be zero and then press enter. And then it's going to be 16 and then 16 more be 32 and 16 more be 48. And then I also, based on that, if I could say, okay, my ranges then are going to be one through 14 for the first subnet, 17 through 30 for the second subnet and so forth. Now there's also options for getting really creative with colors and things. So if we wanted to, for example, change the background and change that to green, and then we could make a box and then create a green rectangle or something. <laughs> There's no style point, so I wouldn't try to create a masterpiece here, but I definitely would encourage you to practice with this tool. The link's in the description. Practice with this tool, and that way when you're given this tool to use in the exam, you're more familiar with it and you know how to use it. So I am urging you, if you have an online Cisco exam scheduled or are planning on doing one, take a few minutes with this practice session regarding the whiteboard and make sure that's not going to be a limiting step or a problem when you get to the exam itself. Also, in the comments, I would love your feedback on this online whiteboard as part of the exam. Is it going to be like, for in your opinion, is it going to be worse than having a physical piece of paper? Is it going to be better? 
Uh, is it going to hamper your progress? I would love to know your thoughts on it. Also, if you are just brand new to Cisco Systems, you're just starting with your CCNA, I've got a playlist that has like over 125 videos specific to CCNA. I've also got another playlist for quizzes that I've created over the past uh, like 25 or 30 quizzes. Also, we do those quizzes live. I create a new quiz every Sunday, 11 a.m. Pacific. You're welcome to join us for those live or check out the recordings afterwards. And also, if you're new to IP networking and want to learn about IP addressing and subnetting, I've got a series called Subnet Saturdays. I'll put a link there as well. That covers everything you need to know from soup to dessert, from what is an IP address to how to do variable link subnet masking. And I invite you to join us for all of that. So if you are considering or on your journey regarding a Cisco certification with the CCNA, I've got three recommendations that will help. Number one, click on subscribe. It makes it easier to find me. My name is Keith Barker. It's good to meet you. Secondly, leverage those playlists that I talked about earlier. And third, have fun. Set aside time, study, get better and better and better every week as you progress. Your skills will improve and and you'll be more valuable to yourself, to your family, and to your company. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. Happy studies.